Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Dr. Dick Walker. I'm coming to you from Spokane, Washington. It's November the 6th, and this is uh, my monthly Science of ASEA Redox for healthcare professionals. So hopefully you're in for a treat here. Uh, and this is a not so deep dive into the science, a little bit uh, shallower dive than uh, Dr. Lee Osler presented last month, uh, but I think you'll get a lot out of it and you'll have a much sounder understanding of what this product is uh, when we're done this morning. So let's get started. Okay, a little bit about me for those of you who don't know me. I've been a physician for uh, a number of years. I'm trained in internal medicine and emergency medicine. I've been involved with ASEA for about nine years now as an entrepreneur in this area. I'm a spouse, a father, a grandfather, high altitude mountain climber, and I serve on the ASEA Medical Professional Board. Uh, we're going to talk about some knowledge today that you may not uh, be aware of, and I like to remind people to open their minds to new possibilities. You know, there's three areas of knowledge that we deal with, what we know we know, and examples here might be antioxidants and vitamins and minerals, what you know you don't know, and maybe the biochemistry of cellular repair might fall into that category. And, you know, the, the area where many of our breakthroughs come from is the area of what we don't even know we don't know about yet. And I suspect there's some of you here uh, that redox falls into that category. So let's get started here. We're going to be talking today, you know, Western medicine deals uh, a great deal with trying to alleviate symptoms. Uh, and many times it's because they don't really have uh, a treatment that addresses the causes. And we're not talking about a treatment here today. We, the ASEA Redox product doesn't claim to cure, heal, or treat anything. What it does do is give the body a tool that the body can use to address the root causes of illness. Uh, and that can many times be a more effective approach uh, than trying to interrupt uh, the natural state of affairs with some sort of medication. But redox signaling, why is it so important? Well, because it's the absolutely the essential for the healthy function of all cell types because cellular dysfunction is the root cause of all illness. When somebody has symptoms, you can, uh, you can be quite assured that there's something going on at the cellular level in some area of their body uh, that is leading to dysfunction uh, and those symptoms. And controlling chronic cellular inflammation is really uh, at the root cause of cellular dysfunction. So we're gonna talk about uh, cellular inflammation, the chronic type, uh, and the role that that plays and the interaction uh, of redox signaling molecules with that. And, and I like to tell people that trying to, trying to help somebody who's suffering from a serious health challenge without first addressing redox challenges and redox deficiencies and homeostasis is like trying to play darts with your hands tied behind your back or ping pong blindfolded. It just leads to frustration because if you don't address the root cause of that problem, you're never going to get the kind of results that you're looking for. And medications often don't address that root cause. They only address a, a, a small part of what's leading uh, to those symptoms and that dysfunction. All of what we're talking about this morning is based in science. Uh, you know, previously I've popped up a bunch of studies. I'm not gonna do that this morning. I want you to understand though, that everything I'm talking about uh, is based on science that can be uh, looked at and explored and researched uh, in databases like pubmed.gov. And you can see articles like this, redox homeostasis, the golden mean of healthy living. It could be, if you change that title, it could say the golden mean of healthy cells because that's what it's all about. So we're talking about a true breakthrough in science. And the founder of this company, Virtus Norton, I think put it very succinctly uh, when, we, when he started uh, this venture, when he said that redox is the single greatest health science breakthrough of our lifetime. And when I first got involved, I thought that that was maybe overstating his case, but after nine years of involvement with this and seeing hundreds, if not thousands of people improve with this, I don't think that that's an overstatement at all. And he went on to further say that this technology has the potential to spearhead the greatest advances of health that we have ever seen. 
And I have no doubt uh, to the truth of that statement. And we're in the very early phases of this revolution of addressing the root cause of illness through modulating and, and correcting deficiencies in redox. But to understand this, you really have to think small. If you're a healthcare professional and have some sort of degree way back when, or maybe just a few years ago, you took biochemistry and physiology and you understood that the body's made up of atoms that come together in molecules that come together in cells. And there's so many of these things that it's really hard to wrap your head around. But we're gonna, you, you, there's a number of ways to look at these molecules. These molecules are building blocks for structures, for cell walls and mitochondria and ribosomes and all the things that make up cells. But they're also molecules for biochemistry. They're molecules for information sharing. And that's what we're gonna concentrate on today. They're molecules as a means of communication. And the amount of communication that goes on in a human body is far more than any supercomputer. In fact, it may be far more than if you linked all the computers on earth because it's an unfathomable amount of communication that goes on just to keep you alive. So life is interesting to, uh, to contemplate for just a few minutes because at the basic level, it's just a whole bunch of complex series of chemical reactions, interactions between molecules changing from one form to another. And that's supervised by a very complex genetic code that has evolved over the, uh, over the eons. And it's coordinated by interactions between these molecules. And it's largely coordinated by interactions uh, of redox signaling. So all of this biochemistry would not amount to life unless there was that coordination and control. And I didn't ever really think of it that way when I was studying biochemistry and physiology because I was so immersed in the details of what we knew you know, 30, 40 years ago. But as you look at it, it's important to understand that effective control of all of that biochemistry is really at the root of health and illness. Uh, so what's providing that control? What's making all that biochemistry work to, to make a, a human being or for that matter, any, any animal or plant? Well, it's information and communication. And the number one foundational information communication mechanism in our body is done by redox signaling molecules. So the secret to healthy cells is really to control what we call chronic inflammation. And we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit later, but we want to be able to do that without disrupting appropriate immune responses. We want to do that without disrupting homeostasis. We want to do it by assuring intracellular redox homeostasis, which is a balance between oxidants and reductants. And we'll get into the definition of redox here in a minute. So what is cellular communication? That that may be a term that's new to you. It may fall into that, what you don't know, you don't know about. But redox signaling is a scientifically documented mechanism of cellular communication. Communication from one cell to another and communication within that cell so that things can be organized, so that DNA can be expressed, so that your cell can live and change and uh, and repair and function and, and do what it's supposed to do as a cell. That all takes a huge amount of coordination and communication. And it's key to coordinating that wide range of biochemical reactions in and between cells. It's key to maintaining redox homeostasis. And our lives simply would not be possible without redox signaling molecules. Most people, when I'm doing a live presentation and I ask them, how long can you exist without oxygen? Understand that that's maybe three minutes or you know, some people who practice uh, holding their breath for various reasons might be able to make it five minutes without oxygen, but, but that's pretty much the upper limit. And yet they don't realize that redox signaling molecules are just as essential to that. Maybe you could get by for 10 minutes or so if we neutralize all of them in your body, but you wouldn't last very long, I can assure you of that. They're that important. And they regulate every major system in your body. Not just some, but every system in your body relies on 
cellular communication largely accomplished by a sufficient uh, and adequate supply of redox signaling molecules at the cellular level, not just floating around in your bloodstream, but actually inside of your cells. Um, here's an abstract, uh, another abstract I pull up, you know, an overview of the mechanisms of redox signaling. What I want to draw your attention to on this slide, though, is down in the lower left corner, you see that little box that says 19 of 34,427 references. What that means is that if is that I went into the pubmed.gov database uh, and typed in uh, you know redox signaling and came up with over 30 almost 34,500 references and this is just one of those. So when anybody asks you is there science behind this technology behind this product there are thousands of peer-reviewed scientific articles and review articles uh, dealing with this subject. So it is very highly scientifically based. So let's look at redox, the redox, uh, the science of redox here. Now, some of this is going to look very complex, and I don't put it up there to try to explain all of it to you. I'm going to show you some slides of what goes on in the mitochondria inside of our cells because that's where redox signaling molecules are formed. And that's where redox signaling molecules perform a lot of the communication that's necessary to maintain life. So let's take a look at some of this. So what is oxidation? Oxidation is a simple chemical physiologic term that describes the loss of an electron. You've got a molecule there of water or, or oxygen, and when it loses an electron, it changes its, its, uh, uh, its form, uh, and that uh, process is called oxidation. If you add back in that electron, that would be called reduction, uh, and that would, that would um, return that initial molecule to its initial state by an oxidation reduction reaction. So you can see that electron moving from one molecule to another. That's what redox is all about. Um, when we talk about respiration, most people think about breathing, but cellular respiration is actually the process of using oxygen in these redox reactions. So oxidation in that regard uh, is gaining an atom of oxygen. Uh, and reduction is donating an atom of oxygen. Now, I know your mind is already probably doing somersaults and saying, oh my God, I don't understand this stuff. I, I, I learned it when I was taking biochemistry. I never thought I'd use it again. Don't worry. You don't really have to uh, understand this at the level that some of us do. Just know that it's there. And this is the, found, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> the foundation of why redox signaling is important and why it works and why it's effective at, at why it's an effective tool um, to use to give to your body, to the cells in your body, so that they can restore these normal functions. So if you look at, at what's an example of a, of a redox reaction, looking at it from the point of view of adding or removing oxygen, it's a very simple one there. H2O is water. So if you take water and add an extra oxygen, you end up with H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide, which, oh, by the way, is one of the important redox signaling molecules uh, that is very plentiful and functioning in every cell of your body right now. To the right is a diagram of a mitochondria. We're not going to go into that uh, because that's going to get your mind really wrapped up in knots and you're not going to understand the rest of this presentation because you're going to be too worried about whether you need to know that or not. But the mitochondria are the power plants of our cells. They take the food that we eat, glucose, uh, starches or glycogen, fat free, fatty acids, fats, proteins, amino acids, uh, and they take that and they use that to make cellular energy, which is called ATP. They use a process called the Krebs cycle, uh, which is a series of these redox reactions uh, and every time one of these chemical reactions takes place in your mitochondria, don't freak out now, don't get too excited. Uh, this is the biochemistry 
of that PREB cycle or otherwise known as the citric acid cycle. And this is how food, whether it's proteins, carbohydrates, or fats are used by the body through the process of metabolism to create ATP, which is the energy, the fuel that our body uses. We can't use any other kind of fuel. Essentially, we need that ATP. And every time one of these reactions in this cycle takes place, we get a molecule of ATP, but we also generate these redox signaling molecules that our body, I used to think these were just waste products or byproducts of uh, cellular metabolism to create energy. That's what I was taught a number of years ago when I took my college courses. But now we know because this of this recent understanding of the role of redox signaling molecules, we now know that those molecules are very important uh, for maintaining uh, balance in the cells and for maintaining communication. But over on the right-hand side, you can see that series of, of arrows. And every time those arrows drop down that stairway, we produce a molecule of ATP and some sort of redox signaling molecules. Many of these molecules are oxidants. And so antioxidants enter into the conversation because they help to balance uh, this and create homeostasis in the cell so that we don't have excessive oxidation. What is oxidation? We've already covered that already. Uh, let me give you an example of oxidation that you would, uh, that you would be very familiar with. If you have a, a shiny piece of iron metal and you put it out in a damp environment, it will rust. Rusting is oxidation. Uh, it's moving an electron around in those iron atoms or iron molecules from one state to another, from a shiny iron state to a rusty iron state. That is an example of oxidation uh, in the non-biologic uh, world, but oxidation nonetheless. So antioxidants, we used to think were the holy grail of cellular health, of neutralizing all these radical oxidants and bringing the cell back into balance. And we now have found that the oxidants are just as important. And in fact, the society of, of, of researchers, of PhDs that study this stuff, that make a living and, and, a, and, and have a passion for studying this stuff, several years ago changed the name of their professional society from the Society for Antioxidant Biology to the Society for Redox Biology because they realize that there's two sides to that coin. There's the oxidant side and the reductant side. There's the uh, oxidant and antioxidant side, and they need to be in balance. If you think of them as two sides to a coin, balance would be the coin standing on its edge because both sides of that coin are equally important. Here's another slide that might twist your mind into more knots. But this, I put this up to show you that this is a typical reaction in your body. Uh, and each of those squiggly uh, yellow lines represent a signaling function and a signaling molecule. You can see hydrogen peroxide is that upper right-hand circle. Nitric oxide is over there on the left. Uh, hydroxyl is down on the lower right. Uh, all of these molecules are formed during this cycle of cellular respiration, and they are all very important redox signaling molecules. The SOD and that green circle is, is an antioxidant uh, that is involved in the function of taking uh, um, an oxygen dimer, two molecules of oxygen, uh, and providing an antioxidant function, and it turns into hydrogen peroxide by adding, by, by by taking hydrogen and oxygen and putting them together. One more step in that reaction and, you're and you have water. So let me go back. Oops. And for some reason, my cell on reductance didn't show up. Anyway, so you might be sitting there saying, okay, so what are these signaling molecules? Well, here's an example of some of these redox signaling molecules. 
superoxide, for example, that was that oxygen dimer, two molecules of or two atoms of oxygen stuck together, hydrogen peroxide, hypochlorous acid, nitric oxide, and others are redox signaling molecules. And they are at the top of the list for cellular communication. Yes, there are things called transcription factors, and those are important. And someday we'll either myself or Lee uh, Osler, who has written a very important book, I'll mention at the, at the conclusion here, uh, we talks a lot about the role of redox signaling in the role of transcription factors in, uh, in uh, opening up our DNA library. And I'll mention that briefly at the end with an example of a study that ASEA did. Um, cytokines and hormones and neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin, all of these are signaling mechanisms within our body, examples of signaling systems, but all of those signaling systems also rely on redox signaling to make those systems work. So the most foundational signaling system in our body is redox. Um, this is another slide from, from Lee's book where he shows when you're in oxidative balance and homeostasis between the oxidants and reductants, that balance we call homeostasis. When we get when we get out of balance uh, and we have oxidative stress, then the response through redox signaling and uh, gene expression is to bring us back into balance. And the labor force in those reactions are th are things that we get in our diet: vitamins, minerals, uh, enzymes, antioxidants. But the labor force, the functionality of making that all work is redox signaling molecules. So a few, a, a few questions that I'm asked frequently, and you probably would love to know the answers for, is, is redox signaling molecule supplementation safe? It is absolutely the safest thing that I ever recommend as a healthcare professional. Um, there are literally no side effects, allergies or toxicity because these molecules are native to your body. Your body knows exactly what to do with them. And in the ASEA supplement, there is nothing other than redox signaling molecules. Uh, there are no other chemicals or molecules in there that can cause any problems. Can everyone take it? Essentially, yes, because everyone's body works the same way at the cellular level. Um, are there contraindications? Not really, are there age limitations? No, because we all function in the same way, whether we're six months old or 60 or 90 years old, our cells function in the same way. Uh, does it interact with medications? No, it does not. So you don't have to worry about that. I get that question frequently. Uh, does everyone take the same dose? No, some people need more than others. Uh, and can you take too much? No, you really can't. And I. I I'm not going to go into the details of that, uh, but literally you cannot overdose uh, on this product. How often do you need to take it? Uh, at the very minimum, once a day. It's better to take it twice a day. And for some people, they get much better results if they take it three or four times a day, spreading out the intake of these molecules because they only last in your body for about three hours or so after you drink a dose of ASEA. How do you know that your body is taking advantage of these molecules? Because you feel better, because things that weren't working before start to work uh, and your body starts to come back into that state of health that you're looking for simply by providing your cells a tool that they can use to restore that health and vitality uh, that they've lost due to the fact that they don't have enough of these molecules. What can cause that? Well, aging certainly can, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but uh, toxins in your environment can cause that. Lack of exercise can cause a decrease in your mitochondria and a decrease in these molecules. So there, and diseases can do the same thing. So there are, are a number of things that can cause your body to be in a deficiency state regarding redox signaling molecules. And that's why this, supplement can do so much good for so many people. Let's talk a little bit about aging and redox and what the connection there is. Well, the connection is that we know from what the biologists tell us that for every 10 years of life, we lose about 
of our mitochondria and 10% of our redox signaling molecule production. Uh, so as that redox, I'm gonna shorthand that or sh yeah, into RSMs because redox signaling molecules is rather a mouthful. But as our RSM production decreases, we see an increase in all chronic and degenerative diseases. And there is a cause and effect relationship there. Um, and restoring youthful levels of redox signaling molecules can have a very significant impact on giving your body a tool that it can use to restore what, it's, what has been lost uh, previously due to that decline. Let's, let's just clarify what I mean by cellular aging. I'm not talking about your birthday. I'm not talking about chronologic aging. You have no control over that. I'm talking about the biologic and physiologic state of cellular decline, cellular degradation. You can have a young body and that young body can be full of old declining cells. If they're not repaired, if they're not eliminated and replaced with new ones. So aging at the cellular basis means something different than when's your birthday and how old are you? Um, because you can, and on the, on the flip side of that, you can have someone who might be twice your age and have less cellular aging if they're doing the right things. If they're not just taking redox signaling molecules, but exercising by getting an appropriate amount of sleep, by eliminating as much as they can stress from their life. So all of these things can help you to replace old damaged wearing or worn out cells with new ones. And so you can move your cellular age uh, in the correct, the right directions or as a more youthful state, but you can't change the calendar, but you can make significant changes in the, uh, in the health and life uh, and age of your cells. And in fact, cellular aging is what is the most common risk factor for all chronic diseases. It's old damaged cells that haven't been repaired or replaced. And let's look at how important that is because a decrease in redox signaling absolutely corresponds with an increase in disease. Why? Because we see decreasing ability to control all that biochemistry that we talked about. We see decreases in what we call epigenetic signaling, which is necessary to activate the DNA that's responsible for cellular maintenance and repair. We see a decreased ability in that cellular repair mechanisms. We see a decreased ability in replacing severely damaged cells that can't be uh, um, fixed or repaired. We see a decrease in what's called autophagy, which is the process by which our cells eliminate cellular waste products, uh, get them out of the cell into the uh, bloodstream and lymphatic so they can be eliminated by the liver and kidney. But if the cell can't get rid of them, if it has to store all of these uh, de degraded molecules and, and proteins, et cetera, that causes, uh, that causes accelerated cellular aging. So you want to have a healthy autophagy function. Redox signaling is extremely important there. You see decreased immune protection from infections and cancer and an increase in autoimmune issues uh, as we decrease uh, redox signaling. We see decrease in vitality and functionality and adaptability uh, and the a decrease in the ability to survive challenges at the cellular level. Your body is, is a marvelous uh, um, machine, a marvelous has a marvelous mechanisms for self-repair uh, and, uh, and continuity if we give it everything that it needs. And, and that is the right, the right nutrients uh, and the right signaling molecules, but you need both. You can't just take a, a very good uh, vitamin, mineral, nutrient supplement uh, and call it a day. You also have to be sure that your body is, uh, has the vital uh, signaling molecules that it needs as well. So is there anything that we can do about aging? Um, well, first of all, let's 
go back to that concept of aging being the leading risk factor for all chronic and degenerative diseases. Right now, we tend to focus on each disease independently, each of these chronic degenerative diseases. So we have, we have associations and groups of people who are researching aging in the cardiovascular system and aging in diabetes and aging in cancer and aging in lung disease. And yet they all have a root cause in redox signaling degradation. So why don't we combine forces and work on controlling and improving that? Because that will affect all of these diseases, not just one or another. So again, aging should be considered the greatest, single greatest risk factor to health in those over, I used to say 50. Now I, I'm dialing that back because we now know that the aging process starts at a much younger age. And, and redox signaling uh, through ASEA is without a doubt the most powerful anti-aging discovery of our lifetime. But I want you to appreciate that I'm not just talking about something for old people. Um, you know, full disclosure, I'm 73 years old, so I'm very interested uh, in dialing back the effects of aging. But you should be concerned about that uh, in your 20s and 30s even, because when you can prevent things from happening in the future, bad things, you're a lot better off than trying to get things back. Um, I'm going to show you some more pictures later, but this is really a classic anti-aging sequence due to supplementing with the SIA. We'll call her Rosie. She's rather famous in, in ASEA uh, cycles. Uh, and her son got her to start supplementing with, with redox molecules at age 84. She was a little bit resistant to doing it, but he said, mom, I want you to do this. It's important. And you can see in seven weeks, she already is starting to look younger. What's important is she's not just starting to look younger. Her cells are actually getting younger uh, and healthier and more, vi uh, more vital. You can see two years later, she's even younger looking, uh, you know, four years later, even more. And uh, I now have a slide uh, of her at 92, which is what, eight years later. Uh, and she just looks so much younger, so much happier, uh, so much more vitality. Uh, and I don't know of any other thing any other technology, any other products that could give somebody this kind of result. I would challenge you if I took the labels off of these slides and just gave you uh, little stickers with these ages on there, I would bet that the majority of you uh, would switch these dates around and claim that, the, that, that Rosie at 92 was actually Rosie at 84. So this is an amazing technology for dialing back cellular aging uh, and helping your body to prevent the typical problems of aging. So aging is a function of chronic inflammation. And that's the enemy of, uh, of health is the enemy uh, at any age. Chronic inflammation is a real issue. Uh, and I've got to, um, you know, let's differentiate chronic uh, inflammation from acute inflammation. I think I have a better slide here. So let's look at inflammation. Acute inflammation is what happens when you sprain your ankle. My daughter just did that a month or so ago, and it was all swollen and black and blue and red and warm to the touch and tender to the touch, hurt to, hurt to move it, hurt to put any weight on it. That's an acute inflammatory process, very appropriate and a very necessary part of the healing process. And when that ankle is healed, that inflammation will stop, uh, though all of the biochemistry and the cellular response to that will dial back uh, and she'll be back to having pretty much a normal ankle. What happens with chronic inflammation though, is it doesn't ever go away. It's not usually associated with redness or swelling. Uh, it's not even usually associated with much, if any pain, it's just there. It's cellular inflammation, smoldering, chronically causing progressive damage and deterioration at the cellular level. And it's due to an imbalance in redox homeostasis. It's a disruption of that homeostasis. And it doesn't have resolution many times, except that we know that if we supplement with 
redox signaling molecules that we can get a handle on that chronic indolent inflammation that is so damaging. We see that in autoimmune diseases. We see it in things like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and diabetes. And I just was working with a group of dentists uh, a couple of days ago, uh, and I gave a presentation to their staff. In their world, the chronic inflammation that's most important to them is, is gingivitis or periodontitis. It's chronic inflammation in the mouth, which can lead to not only bad things for your teeth, but bad things for the rest of your body because these cells that are chronically inflamed release substances into your bloodstream and locally, like into your gum tissue and your teeth that cause problems throughout the body uh, in what are called inflammatory mediators, which are harmful in the chronic situation. So this product that we're talking about, ASEA Redox, is being researched, or excuse me, Redox is being researched around the world. And ASEA has made a, a, a recent commitment to 10 leading scientists in this area um, to team up with ASEA to, to actually hone in even more closely on the role that our particular uh, version of Redox uh, uh, molecules are doing uh, to the human body. Millions upon millions of dollars are going into a better, gaining a better understanding for what role redox signaling plays in our body. And there are numerous publications. I showed you a couple of references. There are, there are actually by now over 50,000 references to redox signaling in the PubMed database. And there are books uh, written on this. When I got involved nine years ago, there were 600 references in that same uh, reference system at PubMed. Now there's between 40 and 50,000. And there, was, there were no books written on redox biology or redox signaling. Now there are a number of books written on this subject. The information available has been exploding. How is this product made? And here's where a lot of people get hung up on it uh, because it's, again, it's in the don't know you don't know category. This redox signaling product made by ASEA is made from very pure salt water. The absolute purest salt that they can get and the absolute cleanest water that they can get. It then goes through a process of, uh, of uh, passing some electrical current through it uh, and a few other uh, proprietary techniques that they use to separate these molecules apart and then recombine them into a mixture of redox signaling molecules. So the best way to describe what's in the blue bottle of ASEA is that it's a proprietary and patented combination of redox signaling molecules formulated specifically to safely optimize the physiologic signaling effects of redox signaling molecules on cell biology as we've been talking about. So it is a proprietary mixture of these molecules that has been tested and shown to have beneficial effects uh, to helping to establish redox homeostasis and giving the body that tool to improve redox signaling. It's protected by patents and trade secrets, just like uh, any other new technology. And it's owned by ASEA, which is a privately held biotech company in Pleasant Grove, Utah. You know, when, when a company comes up with a new technology like this, one of the things that they like to nail down as quickly as they can is why is this having the effects that it's having on the human body? People are taking this and they're seeing improvements in, in areas of their health. Why is that happening? Well, let's try to get a handle on that. Well, understanding how redox signaling works uh, helps in that regard. And that's what we've been talking to up to this point. But that was redox signaling in general. What does it do? What does this proprietary mixture of redox molecules that ASEA manufactures, what does it do? So a couple of years ago, they, they went to a, uh, a genetic, uh, a company that studies uh, genetic issues. And they said, you know, could you design a study for us to see if and what ASEA is doing uh, to a, a group of genes called signaling pathway genes. These aren't genes 
These aren't fixed genes like the ones that control, say, eye color or hair color. These are genes because those you can't change. These are genes that are amenable to changes due to the environment of the cell through a process that we call epigenetics. If you're a healthcare professional, you've probably heard that term, you may understand it or you may not. But the study of epigenetics is a study of looking at changes in the cellular environment. So changes in the biochemistry within the cell that can affect what genes get transcribed or what genes get utilized and what genes don't get utilized. Because we used to think that um, if you were born into a family where heart disease was prevalent uh, and, and science has shown that there is a genetic propensity to that disease, we used to think that you were just stuck with that. We now know that that's not necessarily true. That, that that gene, although it's there, does not have to be expressed. It doesn't have to be acted upon. And we know that through the process of epigenetics, we can help our cells to either turn on or turn off those detrimental or beneficial genes, whatever they may be. So this study was set up to see whether a group, uh, 60 participants, average age of 40, so we're not dealing with, with old folks, so we're not dealing with people whose redox signaling has been degraded significantly by aging. Um, and, and we gave them eight ounces of ASEA a day. Uh, and then this company did, they were their research company. Um, and, uh, and then they looked at, at measurements of, the, of a bunch of signaling pathway genes and found that although a bunch of them were influenced uh, in small ways, there were five of them that were influenced in statistically significant, to a statistically, that's a mouthful, significant degree. And those five genes are genes that contain the blueprint to some very important uh, health issues. Um, and through that epigenetic effect of providing additional redox signaling molecules that could help the cells to turn on or turn off certain gene pathways were able to influence uh, things like vascular health signaling pathways. That's cardiovascular disease. Digestive enzyme signaling pathways, that's gastrointestinal problems. Hormone modulation uh, pathways, things like um, female hormones, things like insulin, all these different other signaling, uh, many of these other signaling uh, issues and disease are done through hormone modulations. Inflammatory pathway reduction, that's huge. Remember, we've just talked about how important chronic cellular inflammation is on overall health and disease. And here we now know that, that consuming and supplementing using a CA redox has a beneficial effect on inflammation specifically on decreasing inflammation. And then last, but certainly also very important is its effect on the innate immune system pathways. And certainly with what's been going on in the world for the last several years, having a very effective, healthy, innate immune system is very, very important. But you can see uh, an estimate of how many people just in the United States are affected by issues that might be improved if we gave our cells an extra supply of these nutrients, of these signaling molecules, excuse me. Let's look at one of those five genes uh, and, what, and, and, and what those five genes control or influence. This is the EGR1 gene. Let's look at some of the things that are impacted here. I would like to point out the NRF2 pathway in particular, because that's the pathway, that's the genes that allow our cells to produce intracellular antioxidants. We'll have a little discussion about antioxidants here. Antioxidants are very important for maintaining that homeostasis in our cells to counteract excessive oxidation. People are taking plant-based antioxidants by the handful to help that process. But in fact, our cells are very capable of making very effective antioxidants, specifically glutathione and superoxide dismutase. 
And that NRF2 gene is what makes that happen. And we now know that simply by drinking the ASEA supplement, we can activate that NRF2 transcription factor and convince our, our cells to manufacture more of these very necessary redox molecules. Why is that important? Because a one of these antioxidant molecules made in your cell can neutralize millions of oxidant molecules because it gets recycled. A plant-based antioxidant that you might take in your diet, if it was able to get into the cell, which is challenging, can only be used once, and then it's degraded and cannot come back and do that again. So plant-based antioxidants are very inefficient in neutralizing excessive oxidative stress. Let's look at some other ones, insulin signaling. We have a huge category of disease in this country that involves deficient insulin signaling, um, blood sugar issues. Um, we have brain-derived neurotrophic factor. I've seen a number of people with brain-related health challenges who have benefited from taking this supplement. And I think I know now, in part anyway, why that's happening because that, that BDNF is very crucial in repairing a damaged nervous system. Serotonin is very influential in nerve signal transduction. So you can see there's some very, very important uh, pathways here that are influenced by supplementation with redox signaling molecules. Interferon down on that lower area is very important in defending against uh, things like viral infections. So I hope you're starting to see how absolutely important this supplement is. So in summary, this, this study showed that this cell signaling supplement improved immune system health. It helps to maintain a healthy level of inflammation. It helps maintain cardiovascular health and supports arterial elasticity. Um, that can help to counteract that disease that we so many people suffer from that is from hardening of the arteries or stiffening of the arteries. That leads to an increase in blood pressure, which is a terrible problem uh, for many people and leads to all kinds of cardiovascular issues. I will say that I used to have that problem and after being on ASEA for four years, I don't have that problem anymore. Does ASEA cure, heal, or treat that problem? No, it gives the body a tool that it can use to fix the root cause of that problem and make your arteries more elastic. It improves gut health and digestive enzyme productions. The leading cause or the leading sales of over-the-counter medicines in this country are medicines to deal with gut issues like antioxidants and those that class of medications. And last but certainly not least, um, helping to modulate uh, hormones in our body. Again, hopefully by now you're starting to understand that this technology is addressing root causes and by addressing root causes, minimizing or eliminating symptoms that develop from out of control root causes, mostly cellular inflammation of, of a chronic nature. I'm gonna show you a few before and after pictures because I'm a firm believer in pictures telling a, an important story. But here we have a young woman with a keloid scar on her nose. We all know uh, that there's no way to get rid of that scar. Anything you might do to help that scar is just going to uh, make the body create more scarring. So the best thing to do with it is leave it alone until Lucia came along and she put redox signaling molecules on that area and it disappeared. It allowed the body to get rid of that scar tissue because it was no longer necessary. Uh, the wound that caused that occurred years ago. Here we have, and just to dispel uh, the impression that you might have that ASEA is only for us old folks. Here's a young man with a, a very intractable case of an inflammatory issue on his face. It's a combination of inflammatory ca caused by infection, and it was out of control several months after applying redox molecules to his skin, and I think he was also drinking these molecules, that problem is gone forever. Here we have, uh, you can see what it does to 
wrinkly, old, saggy skin. Uh, you can see what it does to some nasty problems that you can develop on your heels in the wintertime. Uh, the lower right-hand corner is a veterinarian friend of mine who put redox molecules on the right side of his face and not on the left. And you can see quite clearly the difference uh, after several months. Here we have uh, uh, some really nasty skin conditions um, that resolved or substantially improved with the application of molecules and drinking them. In the upper right, that skin manifestation is actually, um, it's, it's like the tip of the iceberg because this woman has a very significant autoimmune challenge. And I'm not going to talk about, uh, I'm not going to use disease labels here, but simply by drinking these molecules, uh, let's see, May to June to July, over a couple of months, uh, that condition improved so much that that rash, that external manifestation of a serious body-wide systemic inflammatory disease improved substantially. And then in a less serious mode on the lower right-hand corner, you see a skin tag uh, that just fell off uh, after several applications over 16 days of additional redox signaling molecules. So I hope you can come to some conclusions here. The bo bottom line is that knowing what we now know, we can better appreciate the many problems that develop in the absence of redox homeostasis at the cellular level. We can better understand that problems with redox signaling are a major uh, cause of many, if not all diseases. And we can now appreciate the huge array of benefits, potential benefits available from redox signaling molecule bio replenishment with the CA redox. Because folks, there is only one source of supplemental redox molecules. No other company has been able to manufacture and stabilize these very reactive molecules so that we can use them to supplement our body's supply of redox. Many people want to know how long is it going to take before they notice a difference? Well, a few people will notice a difference within a week or two, maybe 5%, maybe 10. Um, I, can, I can show you the physiologic effect of this product almost instantaneously um, in terms of balance, flexibility, and strength. Um, but when it comes to helping your body to repair some sort of ongoing chronic significant condition, um, we're looking at about 30% of people who will notice some improvement within a month, about 60% in a couple of months, uh, getting up to 80 or 90% in the three to four or six month range. Um, but most, if not all people benefit in some significant substantial way um, when they take this product on a regular basis for a period of time. Uh, it's not ordinarily a instantaneous uh, uh, repair uh, because you can't repair instantaneously. A pain medicine works quickly because it's blocking the pain from a problem. A SIA redox can help people manage that pain, not by blocking the signal, but by helping the body to repair the cause of that painful signaling. And that's a much different approach. Uh, and I think a much more effective and uh, reasonable and physiologic approach to many, many problems is to fix, help the body to repair the cause if it's repairable uh, and the symptoms then uh, start to respond in a positive direction. So I like people to commit to at least a 90 day trial period on this. And then if it's working, stay on it uh, for as long as they can. Uh, and some problems will fix themselves during that time period. Some problems will be controlled, but not necessarily eliminated. Sometimes during that three to six month uh, period in the beginning, you may need to take more than the eight ounces. That study, remember, was done on eight ounces a day. Some people that are younger and have less serious problems will do well with four ounces, and that's kind of a starter dose, but many, many more people will respond to eight ounces, and some people need more in that early stage to really kind of kickstart that, uh, that cellular repair cycle, kickstart that 
that control of cellular inflammation. Um, in, in summary, what these molecules do, the, what, what we see them doing through this mechanism of cellular homeostasis, redox homeostasis, is it allows our cells to detect damage to then orchestrate that repair through the epigenetic signaling and turning on the right genes uh, and, and or affect a replacement for that cell if it's too damaged or too worn out to be repaired. So it's a detect, repair, replace uh, technology is the overall way to look at this. And that takes time. That doesn't happen usually in a day or two or often not a week or two. It takes, it takes weeks uh, to give the body time to repair those cells or to replace those cells. If you want more information, um, I like um, PubMed, it's the National Institute of Health Library. All of the information is there in there has been peer reviewed, has been evaluated by experts in their field. Nothing on there is, is, uh, is an opinion. Everything on there is to the best of our knowledge factual. Um, don't don't do a Google search. A Google search is going to pull up just a bunch of other people's opinions. It's not reviewed in any way for truth uh, or honesty. Uh, and quite frankly, the opinions about ASEA Redox on Google uh, vary from this is manna from heaven and a miracle all the way down to it's just expensive salt water. So don't believe everything you read on Google. But if you like the Google search engine, go to googlescholar.com, not just an ordinary Google search. Um, if you wanna look at the science that pertains specifically to ASEA's proprietary blend of redox molecules, go to aseascience.com and you'll see all of the, you'll see the gene study I referred to. You'll see a study on the effects of these molecules and athletic performance. You'll see a number of different things, the safety studies, all of that sort of stuff is at acscience.com. If you want to see what people are reporting and experiencing with this, um, you can go to, I like realredoxresults.com, password is redox, or you can go to redoxexperiences.com, the password there is associates with a capital A, or you can go to the Facebook site, ASEA Healthy Self, that's a private site. You just need to be added by the person who invited you to this presentation so that you can see the thousands of written testimonies. The testimonies on real redox results are video. So they're, they're, uh, it's a good way to quickly check, uh, check through what people are experiencing when they supplement with these molecules. Now, if you really want to dig into the science, if you really want to understand those equate or those pictures of uh, of molecules and Krebs cycle and mitochondria, uh, if you want to dig into that deeper, or just want to get a very a much deeper, more profound understanding of why redox matters to our health and to our life, um, my friend Lee Osler has written an excellent book. Uh, it's called Redox Matters, Connecting the Dots Between Redox Biology and Health. Uh, and much of the information here is certainly uh, expounded upon by Lee in his book. Uh, and it's a very readable book. Like I said, you don't have to internalize an understanding of the all of that chemistry that's going on in the mitochondria to understand what this is doing. But if you want to, that also is uh, included in Lee's book, and you can you can uh, you know digest that and and uh, mull it around and and uh, you know draw your own conclusions. But this is uh, an excellent book, and I love that you know his concept of these molecules awakening your inner doctor, because in the vast majority of situations, your inner doctor can fix and repair what's going on with you. Uh, so that you don't have to go uh, to uh, an external doctor like myself uh, with problems that have gotten out of hand uh, and now are very challenging. So I would encourage you, if you're really interested in a deeper dive, but not so deep that it's not understandable, I would uh, pick up a copy of Lee's book, either at redoxmatters.com or I think you can get it on Amazon as well. So Thank you very much. We're, uh, let me see, timing-wise, we're at the top of the hour. 
Uh, I was a little bit uh, um, windy this morning, so we got you got a whole hour of education. Hopefully, you've got a much better understanding uh, at a quasi scientific level, anyway, of how this works, why it works, what it can do for people, and why it's so important uh, in helping people to activate that inner doctor and to regain uh, a much healthier level uh, of function. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't abdicate the need for exercise and sleep and you know lifestyle changes. But um, Lee talks about in that book uh, that this is, a, uh, it, this is a way to hack into the beneficial effects that those lifestyle changes give you. He, I think he uses the term a biohack. So it, you can look upon it as a shortcut to some of those things, I look upon it as an additive, an adjunct. I figure if I can exercise, get enough sleep, try to decrease stress in my life and take redox signaling molecules, then I'm gonna stay much healthier, much longer and really extend my health span and probably my lifespan as well. And certainly uh, improve the, uh, the, uh, the health of my cells in a very positive direction. So have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, this, uh, this has been recorded, so it'll be available uh, on a Vimeo recording. And if you need to, uh, if questions about how to access that, just reach out to us and we can tell you where to find that recording. It will also be uh, on OCU United, I believe. So thanks again. And I'll see you uh, on the third Saturday of the month. I'll be interviewing a healthcare professional. I haven't lined up my guest yet, but uh, I'm sure it will be uh, a valuable a half an hour or so with a healthcare professional of one variety or another who is using redox in their life and in their practice. And I think you might, some of you may be interested in that as well. So have a great day and I'll see you uh, in a couple of weeks.